Hello everyone. All right. So what you see here today is a sample of what you will be learning and achieving uh, for this week's exercise. Now, let me give you a good look around. Okay. All right, so the aim of this exercise is to learn how to create gathers using fabrics. All right, so at the end of the exercise here, your aim also is to learn the different characteristics of different fabrics and how they behave when they are being gathered. Now, what you see here is a compilation of different fabrics and different ways um, of gathering the fabrics. And at the end of it, uh, you're going to create this little artwork here where you have different textures, different lengths, different width of fabrics. And you will compile them together to make sort of like um, uh, a gathered piece of artwork okay now this is an a4 size in the following video i will show you a step by step of how you make them uh, piece by piece and i'm gonna be showing you two methods of gathering the fabrics all right so watch for the video later on and you will see uh, how you can achieve this um, a step by step using the fabrics that you have bought so before we begin as well um, the colors that you select the patterns and prints that you choose um, and the materials as well the texture that you want is entirely up to your creativity I would encourage you to refer back to the color palettes that you have created in past projects so that um, you can link it back to your past projects as well. Um, so any colors palette that you have created and that you would like to sort of now um, ideate them into a 3D sample, uh, you can apply so in this project. Okay. All right, so I have cut out a few uh, fabric samples here that I'm going to be sewing them and making them into gathers. Um, as you can see here, they are of different length and width. And that's fine because you want to mix it up to create a variety of textures. Um, you also want to select um, different fabrics to use. Um, a, a great tip as well is to stick to a nice color palette. Uh, if you have previously in uh, previous semesters uh, created a, a color palette, uh, you can refer back to it and follow that color palette and select your fabrics. So I have here um, cotton canvas. I have two. I also have a... Um, printed fabric that looks like um, a cut but it's actually printed okay right uh, so I've sectioned them into uh, two different cuts here the first one here uh, this tree here they are cut at quite a wide um, a white width Okay, and I folded them into half uh, simply because I want to have a, a neat finishing for my gathers. So this one as well, I folded that into half. Now, um, as you can see, they are much longer than a regular A4 paper. Uh, and simply because when you gather the fabrics, they're going to shrink in length. Okay, so I folded them in half and I gave them a good iron. You always want to iron your fabrics uh, so that, you know, you decrease any um, uh, crease on it. Uh, for teal fabric, if you have um, previously experimented on 
ironing on tulle fabric you know that they can't be ironed on high temperature uh, I just didn't bother ironing it because um, I quite like the rough texture of it so then here as well this is um, much smaller in width um, but it is also folded in half okay so I folded the wrong sides together and these are the right sides okay so for these I'm gonna leave um, the two edges here raw because they're gonna be hidden under a piece of fabric later on then I have another set here <coughs> which I am going to uh, do my gathers in the middle of the fabric okay so um, sort of leaving a um, two edges there with frills so what I did with this two set here as you can see I have actually rolled it uh, rolled both sides of the hem inside twice and pressed it with the iron so both sides here they are pressed okay fold it and press so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to quickly sew these uh, edges so that when I create my gathers, I'm going to get a clean finishing and no raw edges. Okay. Alright, so I also have, because that's not enough to fill up my A4 paper, I've also got um, more tulle here. Um, these two tulles, I'm going to leave them with a raw edge uh, simply because tulle is a non-woven fabric. And they do not fray like normal fabrics do. So I'm going to leave them with a raw edge. So you got to be selective about um, what you want to leave with a raw edge. And which one needs to have, um, we call this a hem, a rolled hem. Okay, or do you want to double it up to create a cleaner finish? So now I'm going to go ahead and... Um, stitch up all my hems and I'm also then going to um, sew a straight line across all my fabrics uh, to create my gathers okay right so I've gone ahead and sewn my hems uh, for these two here, the set here, where I'm going to create my gathers in the middle of the fabric. Whereas um, the first set that I have here, um, they do not need to be sewn um, at the hem. Okay, and that's simply because I'm going to make my gathers on the edge of the fabric for this set. So now that you have, um, you can see that I've sewn my hem here. Okay, on both sides. Okay, this is the right side and for this one as well this is the right side and this is the wrong side okay now you do notice that there are little fraying bits there you want to make sure that you trim them off So I'm going to bring my machine over here and we're going to start with um, set number two where the gathers will be in the middle of the fabric. So I have my machine here. Okay, now if you have a similar machine as me or maybe you have a different machine, um, different brand of machine you will still notice similar settings so on a home portable machines you have uh, the many settings on the big dial here uh, you want to select the straight stitch okay and then there is another dial with numbers usually located on the top um, they usually range from 0 to 5 now to make gathers uh, you need to put it on the biggest setting so for me here the biggest setting is number four okay now if you haven't got acquainted to your machine here there is also usually a, a, a manual paddle that you have to um, pull down um, maybe it's not here maybe it's here or maybe it's at 
the other side uh, this is a back stitching you can see it goes u-turn okay so for gathers okay you gotta make sure that when you start sewing your line uh, you back stitch and then when you finish sewing your line um, you do not back stitch you leave it as an open stitch and that's because you're going to pull it later so you have to make sure that you are able to pull it if you do a back stitch at the end of your stitching line you won't be able to pull your fabric to create gathers okay so we're gonna start with the short one here okay um, I'm just gonna fold it in half to gauge the middle point okay so that's my middle point and that's where my stitching line is going to be okay just next to that blue line there So remember to set your dial at number four and when you start stitching back stitch okay and then go forward okay when you reach the end lift up your needle lift up your foot okay now you pull Okay, when you, uh, if you are unable to pull, uh, if you look at this thing here, it's going up and down. And that's because I'm manually using my hand to turn the dial on the side of the machine. So I'm leaving quite a long thread here at the end of my stitching. Uh, and this length will help me to pull my fabric later on. So remember that when you reach the end, do not backstitch only at the start you backstitch okay I'm just gonna trim off the excess at the start of my stitch there all right so there you go that's one and we go we will go with the next one the long pink one Okay, if you can't find the middle line, uh, you can quickly go and iron, fold it in half and iron it to get a crease line. Or you can use a ruler and chalk to draw a straight line to help guide you to sew a straight line. Okay. Now, um, okay, there you go. Right, so we start with back stitching in front. Come to the end now we're gonna pull okay and cut all right there you go a middle stitching line there all right so we're gonna go back to set number one uh, the ones where I folded them in half Okay, and now this time I am going to stitch about one quarter inch uh, away from the edge, the folding edge. So I'm going to stitch here. Okay, same thing here. I'm going to start with a back stitch. Okay, so one quarter inch is actually let me just focus one quarter inch is actually if you align it to the edge of your footer here uh, it should give you about one quarter inch okay back stitch
Okay. So there you go. Okay. So this is where I started stitching. I'm going to just snip it off. Okay, so you will do the same with all um, the fabrics that you have cut out. And um, once you have done that, then um, you are ready to gather your fabrics. Now, let me just demonstrate one more to you. Um, and this is the tulle fabric. Now, as you can see here, the tulle has a lot of holes. Okay, and if you actually look at your machine, there is a gap underneath there and it can be a little tricky to sew your tulle fabric. So that if you want to experiment with sewing your tulle fabric, my best advice would be to get a piece of paper that you will put underneath between um, your fabric and the surface of your machine and sew it together with the piece of paper and once you're done you're going to tear that piece of paper away so let me just show you how i do it okay so i've got a piece of a4 paper here um it's not actually long enough um for my entire length of my tulle fabric but that's okay uh, we're just going to demonstrate to you okay right So the function of putting a piece of paper down there is so that um, the fabric do not get wind up and uh, get caught underneath the bobbin um, and ending up, you know, forming a ball of, of thread inside the machine. And especially if you're very new to your machine, uh, troubleshooting it and fixing it uh, can be uh, a very tedious process. Okay? Right, so one quarter of an inch again. So just the same thing. I'm gonna back stitch. So if you don't have a paper that's long enough, uh, what you could do is you could cut your paper and continue on. It doesn't matter because the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to tear that paper away. Okay. Just be careful not to unwind uh, your thread as well. It can be quite delicate because um, you're sewing on a number four or number five stitch. And that's the widest stitch that you're using. So if you're asking me why am I, am I using the widest stitch, um, because if you select a stitch that is too small, uh, uh, especially on thick fabrics, um, it will be very difficult to pull the fabric. Okay, so this is the result uh, of sewing, sewing two. So once you have sewn all your edges, uh, remember leaving a long thread at the end, then we're going to gather it and we're going to use hand sewing needles to finish it off. All right. Okay, so here are the fabrics that um, we have sewn earlier. Right, so here I'm going to demonstrate to you how you create gathers. So we'll start with the smallest piece here first. Okay, now this is the edge. Okay, let me just focus. Okay, 
this is the edge where I started sewing. This is the back stitch um, uh, area. Okay, and this is where I left the long trailing thread here. So I'm going to hold my thread here. Okay, and I'm slowly going to pull my fabrics. So you want to be very careful because um, if you pull too hard, you might risk uh, breaking the thread. So what helps sometimes is also to separate your threads. Okay, so just pull one and see. Okay, so just um, don't pull both together. Pull one. Okay. And you can see there that, that uh, my fabric is starting to crease and gather. Okay, so be gentle with it. Okay, so here is where you experiment with uh, the type of gathers that you like um, and how you want it to look. Do you want sort of um, a loose gather or you want to pull it really tightly uh, that it gathers into a very tight um, gathers. Okay, again, be very careful not to break your thread. Um, if you break your thread, then uh, you, you can unpick, all right? You can unpick and then you can sew it on the sewing machine again. Okay, so there you go. Okay, the first gather is done. All right. <clears throat> to finish it off, I've got a... Um, sewing needle here hand sewing needle okay okay so now um what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna thread these two threads into my hand stitching needle so i'm just gonna snip off the long one gonna thread both of them together all right so the final step here to complete your uh, each individual gather okay is to actually do a manual back stitch Okay, now this is important because if you do not um, backstitch it, your gathers are going to come undone. And then it's going to be uh, one strip, strip of fabric again. Okay, so we hold it to the end here. Okay. All right. And you just simply backstitch it. Okay. Oh. Coordination skills. I'm trying to coordinate sewing and looking at my camera at the same time. So, and I have a cat, as you can see, who's, um, who won't leave the table. He looked like he's going to attack 
my work at any time. Okay, just hold on. Okay, here we go again. Alright, so at the end here, I'm just going to go one time. Okay. And another time. You can go a third time if you want. Okay. So that's a back stitch. Okay. And I'm going just the fourth time around the thread and making a loop and pull it. Okay, so once um, when you pull it, your fabric is no longer gathering, that means it's um it's secure. Okay, now the gathers will still move in between, and that is fine. So usually what we do if we apply this onto a garment. Uh, we will actually put it through the machine again and sew the middle line here to make sure that um, the gathers are set and not moving. Okay. Alright. So you don't have to do that because we're just making samples. Um, uh, just, you know, trying to play around and... and um, the key here is to have fun uh, and make um, many different uh, textures and many different types of fabrics of gathers. Okay. So I'm going to gather all my fabrics. I'll show you this one as well. Okay. So just pull uh, one of the strings and leave the other one so go slow so let's say um, if you were to apply this onto your garments um, you know, you want to have a gathered skirt, maybe that's what you do to the waist um, of the skirt, the waistline of the skirt. Uh, you will gather it and then you're going to sew your waistband on to create a gathered skirt. Okay, or uh, anywhere on your garments that, you know, you want to create uh, gathers. Um, of course, you have to add fullness to your pattern uh, before you can gather the fabric so that once you gather it it fits nicely on the body and according to the body shape as well okay so this one i quite like it like that um i don't want it to be very tight i, I think this looks quite cute okay so i'll keep it in that way and i'll gather the entire thing um the entire length of it and when I'm done with it, um, I will um, put both of the thread through the hand stitching needle and um, back stitch it a couple of times and tie a knot uh, to make sure that it remains in this um, line that I want. Okay, so this one is the one, again, where I sewed both sides of the hem, as you can see. Um, for the one where I folded it in half, it's going to give you a slightly different um, uh, appearance. So this one kind of looks like a butterfly, doesn't it? It's like, like a ribbon because you did the gathers in, I did the gathers in the middle. And this one, um, my gathers are going to be on the edge. So here, I'm just going to pull and show you. For this, um, the one that you sew on the edge, you got to be a little extra careful because um, the fabric is double 
and that means that it is uh, much thicker and it is sewn on the very edge of the fabric so um, fraying can occur very easily and if it frays then your uh, stitching thread will come undone so just be very gentle with it Okay, so you can see um, the effect is different. Yeah, um, once you pull the entire thing, um, it could go in a spiral or it can end up looking uh, like a ball as well. So again, it depends on how tight you want your gathers to be. Uh, you can experiment with different um, gather tightness. Yeah, okay. All right, okay, so um, we're going to finish it off, okay. So I have finished gathering all my <coughs> fabrics. As you can see here, there are a variety of sizes, a variety of width, and a variety of methods of gathering them. So I've also got here an A4 piece of the same fabric um, that I've cut into an A4 size and this will be my um, my background, <laughs> okay? Uh, so sort of like the base fabric where I'm going to um, use uh, to attach all the pieces of my gathers together and I'm gonna use um, hand stitches to stitch them in place so you can just uh, quickly do some tacking uh, but make sure that they are secure make sure you double stitch them and uh, tie a knot around it okay and of course at this stage um, uh, you know you want to arrange it so that it is aesthetically pleasing um, and that you can see the beauty of, of all your gathers as well on that piece of uh, A4 paper. So a key to making it look good, of course, is to um, overlap and make sure if there are any raw edges there, uh, you want to overlap them a little bit and hide them away from view. Okay, so you try and play with, with it, go a little crazy, go, uh, you know, um, vary the width and the length and uh, arrange them in the end in a way that it also um, should reflect your, um, your color palette um, that you intended uh, for it to, to be like. Okay, so you arrange it in an aesthetically pleasing way. Um, tack them each one down using hand stitches and you're all set. Okay, well, so it sort of looks a little bit like a cake at the moment. <laughs> okay, all right, so um, go crazy with it. Okay, and have fun. Um, and yeah. I will see you in the following week. Bye-bye.